Coding made easy. So, um, I guess I could um, add in the spreadsheet effects now. Yeah, it makes sense. So let's add that in right now. So we're gonna make a new sprite. We're gonna make a new effect. We're gonna call it sprite sheet effect, and we're gonna inherit from the image effect class. And so we're gonna say using Microsoft XMA framework, and I don't think I need anything else. We'll see if we need anything else after. So. Say public override load content unload content and we have our update. Okay, so in our update, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check to see if our player is active. But before we even do that, uh, before we even do that, we're gonna do something before we even forget about it. So up here at the top of our code, we're gonna say public right sheet effect and I believe at the bottom instead of our load content nope yeah so yeah in our load content we'll say set effect sprite sheet effect ref sprite sheet effect so we've gotten that set up so now let's go back to our sprite sheet effect and we're gonna add in a, a few variables so we'll just say public uh, int frame counter and we'll say public int switch frame and uh, we'll have a public vector to current frame and that'll be it for now or, or actually what we could do is we'll say public vector to amount of frames okay so we'll make a we'll make a constructor and by default we'll just set the amount of frames to three by four I believe that's it yeah, so it's three by four. And whatever sprite sheet you're using, just set it to how many frames it has. So it's one, two, three frames in the X coordinate, one, two, three, four frames in the Y coordinate. So that's how we we have it set up. So let's get back to our code. So we'll say new vector two, three by four. That's all we're doing. And for the current frame, we'll set it to, now let's look at this right now. So in our image, the standing frame is frame number one in the X coordinate, right? And we want it to be standing by default. We don't want it to be in a walking animation. So by default, we'll say the current frame is set to one zero. So that's the current frame. And we'll say the switch frame is set to 100 and frame counter will be set to zero. And we can change it. We can change the XML file and at any time we actually need to, to change it. So now that we've gotten that down pat, we're gonna say that if image is active, then we're gonna say frame counter plus equals um, int game time, last game time, total milliseconds. And then we're gonna say if frame counter is greater than or equal to our switch frame, then we're gonna set frame counter equals to zero and we're gonna wanna upgrade our current frame. And we're gonna say current frame plus plus. And I'm gonna explain to you why I did that in just a second. And we're gonna say if current frame times the frame width. Now we don't have the frame width or the frame height. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just make some, um, some properties right now. And we're gonna say um, public int frame width. And we're gonna say get You know what get return image actually we gotta we we're gonna do it like this just in case we're gonna say that if image dot texture uh, not equals to null then we're gonna say uh, return uh, the images with image dot texture dot width divided by 
amount of frames dot x else we're just going to return zero and so that should work oh but amount of frames needs to be casted to an int type and so we're going to do that same for our frame height so we're going to say if image dot texture not equals to null then we're going to return image dot texture dot height divided by amount of frames dot y and then we'll return zero so um what this is basically saying right now is if our image if our texture is not equal to null we're going to um return the width divided by how many frames we have. So if we look at our image right now, um, let's see if it says the width and height in the properties. It does not. So let's look it up right in here. So C++ project, I'm a C sharp projects. So if we look at our player's dimensions, we look at the properties, so it's 96 by 128. So the full width is 96. So if we look, if we look at our, if we open up a calculator right now, and we say 96 divided by amount of frames dot x, which is three. So 96 divided by three is equal to 32. So in the x coordinate, the width is, of each individual sprite is 32 pixels, and 128 divided by four is, you guessed it, 32. So each image is 32 by 32 pixels, and it depends on whichever sprite you're using. It might not be the same as mine, but um, just giving you that example. So it's gonna return our frames width and each individual frame's height. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna say if current frame.x times frames width is greater than or equal to image.texture.width, then we're gonna say current frame.x is equal to zero. And then outside of this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say that else if image is not active, then we're going to just set it back to the default frame. So we're just going to say current frame is equal to new vector two one. Well, current frame dot x sorry is equal to one. And don't worry, I'm going to explain all this in just a second. We're going to say image dot source rect is equal to new rectangle. And we're going to say current frame dot x times frame width. And we'll say current frame dot y times frame height. And we'll say frame width, frame height. Okay, so let me explain ex exactly. Oh, sorry, we got to cast these two ints because rectangles only take ints. Um, so. Let me explain exactly what's going on. So if our image is set to active, which means we have our our spread effect activated, we're gonna uh, increase our frame counter. Now what the frame counter is gonna do is it's gonna count up to a certain value, whichever value our switch frame is set to. So it's set to 100 by default. So it's going to count the total milliseconds and wait, it wait, it's gonna wait till we reach our switch frame value. Once you reach that value, it means, okay, now it's time to switch to the next frame. So we're gonna set frame counter back to zero and we're gonna increase the frame, the X coordinate of the frame by one. Now, why do we increase the X, uh, like the frame and the X coordinate? It might be different with your sprite sheet, but if you look at this sprite sheet right here, um, say I'm walking, I'm pressing down or whatever to walk, right? What's happening is that it's going to uh, take this image, crop it out, then it's going to move to this image, then it's going to move to this image, then back to this image, this image, and this one. So the current frame in the x-coordinate is 0, then it's going to move to the current frame the, in the x-coordinate to 1, then the current frame in the x-coordinate is going to be set to 2, then it's going to revert back to 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, so on and so forth. So uh, the X coordinate represents the cycling through each frame. The Y coordinate basically specifies the direction that you're facing. So we do this, then we say if the current frame times frame width is greater than or equal to the width, then we resort it back to zero. So that's doing exactly what I said before. So the frame width, um, if for example, so it's gonna go through, um, 
this is frame number zero, so it's gonna say zero zero times thirty two is equal to zero, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, then it's gonna be one. One times thirty two, we don't have to worry about that. It's equal to thirty two. Two times thirty two is equal to sixty four, so we don't have to worry about that. Then it's gonna increase it by one. There's nothing here. So what's gonna happen? It's gonna say three times thirty two. That's equal to ninety six, and that's equal to the width of the whole image. So it's gonna say, okay, we we have nothing else to draw. Revert it back to zero. That's exactly what's going on there. And we just say else, we just set it to frame number one. So no matter which direction we're facing, we're gonna get like that standing, that standing motion if we're not doing anything. And so we're gonna say uh, source rect, we're gonna say current frame times frame width and current frame y dot fr times frame height and the frame width and the frame height. So it's gonna say, it's say, say I say the frame is number frame number one. So it's gonna say one times the frame width. So um, that's it's gonna say start drawing at 32 pixels and the current frame Y right now is set to zero. So start drawing from here the f and then draw from, uh, the width is gonna be the frame width. So it's gonna be 32 pixels wide, 32 pixels down. It's gonna crop out that image. I'm just gonna draw that image. So that's exactly how it's gonna work. But you want this to be outside of any of the if statements because whether it's active or whether it's not active, we still want to crop out the image. So that's all we got to do for, um, that's all we really got to do for this. So what we're going to do is in our player.xml file now, we're going to say player.xml, well, okay, we're going to say image effects and we're going to say sprite sheet effect. And let's see if this works for us. Hopefully it works. Unless we did something unbelievably stupid. So I did do something unbelievably stupid. I don't, it's not recognizing the sprite sheet effect. So um, let me just check out what I did and um, I'll, I'll show you how to fix it. Okay, I think I figured out the error, which I did another thing really stupid. Um, I didn't make a call to image dot update so um, stop running this um, so yeah I made a call to image dot update and let's run this so I don't know if it's actually gonna work but so yeah you got this image right here. So it's not really animating right now. So if we want it to animate, then um, this is what we're gonna have to do. So, and we want it to change directions based on the direction that we've actually specified. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that, I'm gonna say image, oh, sorry, image, dot is active is set to true. So we're gonna set the is active to, to true by default, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that if velocity dot x is equal to zero and velocity y dot velocity dot y is set to zero, that means we're not moving at all, then we're gonna set is active to false. So it's gonna be set to true by default. And then if any, if, the, if you decided not to move or anything, we're gonna set it to false after. So if we run this right now, um, and go through, cycle out through all the screens, when you move, um, it's gonna go through the animation. Now it might be kind of laggy depending on how you like it. Um, so you can um, modify it to suit your needs, but we're still not changing directions. And it's an easy way to change directions uh, with this. So we'll just add in some curly braces. And we'll just say, if they're pressing down, we'll say image dot sprite sheet effect current frame dot y is set to zero. And the reason how I came up with this value is pretty simple. So um, this is the first frame, which is down. All of these are down, right? So um, the current frame in the y coordinate is frame zero. And for the left, the player facing left, the current frame of the Y coordinate is one. For the player facing right, the Y coordinate is set to two. And for facing up, the Y coordinate is three. So all we have to do is just change it accordingly. 
So when we press up, we just said that the current frame is set to three for that. So we have to say image dot sprite sheet effect current frame dot y equals two three. And same thing when we press right here. And if your sprite sheet is different, then feel free to change it to accommodate for your sprite sheet, right? Um, so if they press right, it's set to two, and if they press left going to be set to one and just run this program and standing there oh okay so that's kind of weird okay so okay so the Let's see. Oh, I said current from dot X. It's supposed to be about Y. As you can see, you got your little animation. Now, it might be kind of... It's choppy on mine just because I'm running uh, Camtasia now, but it, it shouldn't be choppy for you. If you find the walking animation a bit too slow, uh, then uh, modify the switch frame. So if you wanted to switch frames faster, the lower the switch frame value, the better. And um, if you want to make the animation slower, then just increase the switch frame and then it'll take longer to animate. If it is laggy for you or choppy, then let me know and then I will try and modify it uh, for the next tutorial, but it shouldn't be choppy for you it's just because I'm running uh, a video editing software, that's why. So uh, anyways, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about mapping and having our tile classes and all that stuff. And then after we're done the mapping, then maybe we have to, we'll probably have to just fix up a few things and then we'll get into actually making our tile map editor. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and bye for now.